Okay, hello everyone. Um, this is Bob Frost from the Tuscola Intermediate School District and REM C10. Um, one of the questions that I've got a lot uh, recently is how can we make a phone call or an outreach to a parent or a student um, without giving out our personal phone number, um, either you know via caller ID or what other whatever other means that they may um, get it. So this presentation is just going to be brief and talk about some alternatives to um, allowing you to still make those connections um, remotely, meaning not from school, um, and still have it so that your personal phone number is protected. Um, so let me share my screen here. Okay, so um, I've listed in this presentation um, really three different methods that um, I think all, all have different pros and cons, and I'll talk about those pros and cons as we go through as well. So the first one I get uh, asked about a lot is setting up Google Voice. Um, Google Voice is a phone number, essentially, that Google will assign to you and then you can use either a smartphone, a tablet, or your computer uh, to make outgoing calls using their app. And when you make that outgoing call, the caller ID that the person on the other end sees will be whatever your Google Voice phone number is, so not your personal phone number assigned to your cell phone, let's say. Um, similarly, people are able to turn around and um, call you at that number and um, as long as that app is is running and is um, logged in um, with whatever account you've got it assigned to, then your phone essentially will ring and allow you to answer those calls as well. Um, you can also receive text messages um, through that um, as well. So you can both send and receive calls. And uh, if you've got a smartphone um, and you've got a tablet and you've got a laptop, let's say, that phone number that's assigned to you is the same no matter what device you're on, as long as you're logged in on the same Google account um, while you're using it. Some of the limiting factors, uh, you do have to have the uh, app installed, as I talked about. The uh, Google Voice itself uh, does have to be activated as a service on your um, Google domain. So if you're trying to use your school account, for example, your school uh, Google admin, domain administrator would have already needed to enable that service. Unfortunately, there is a cost uh, for schools to uh, have that service activated. It's a cost per person. Um, and so many schools um, have chosen not to, to turn that on at this time. There is, however, um, uh, a free version if you use your own personal Google account. A um, couple other things as far as limiting factors is, um, you know, the phone number itself that they're going to assign to you is just going to be a phone number, you know, from anywhere. It's not necessarily going to be a local phone number at all. So some of the pros on this, uh, your actual phone number is protected. They would see the inbound caller ID, be whatever your Google Voice number is. As I talked about, uh, you can both make and receive calls with it, and it's free if you use it with your personal Google account. Some of the cons, uh, I already mentioned that uh, most schools don't have it turned on, so you won't be able to use it with your school account. Uh, the phone number will be out of the area, and so people may not be willing to answer your call. Um, this third one, um, you know, the phone number is still going to be assigned to you. Um, it's to your Google account, so it will still follow you around, essentially. And um, so people technically, if you left that turned on, could still call you at any time um, that they wanted to. So it's similar to giving them your cell phone number, I suppose, other than you can turn off the Google Voice service. You can, you know, just have it go to voicemail at certain times if you want to. Um, you know, or could just disable it altogether at some point in the future. Uh, one other sort of minor con is that um, 
if you don't use it regularly, uh, Google will require you to verify that um, that you're still an active account and so forth. Um, and if you don't respond within a given period of time, uh, they'll actually disable it. And then um, you can always go back and, and re-enable it, but uh, likely if you do that, you'll end up getting a different Google Voice phone number at that time because they will have given up your number already. So just quickly, uh, how do you do this? Um, you would log in with your personal Google account. Um, you would go to voice.google.com. And I'm kind of at the step one process here of, you know, going ahead and tying this into my phone um, or into my account. So I would just click on continue. It's giving me some nearby cities, the closest ones it was able to determine uh, for me. So probably the closest one for me would be Seabwing. It lists some different numbers that uh, are available there. So I'm gonna go ahead and just select the top one. We need to verify that your existing phone number. So they ask you then to put in um, whatever your um, actual phone number is so that they can send you a link to it. And um, once you get that code, then you'll have to fill in uh, the verification on that code. I'm not going to complete this process because my phone actually already has uh, a Google Voice number associated with it. And if I was to complete the process, it would actually switch me to this new number. So um, the steps, there's only a couple of steps after that, and I think they're pretty self-explanatory. So you may even want to use that um, just for your own personal life, you know, even outside of the, uh, the situation that we're in now. So let's move on to the next uh, possibility. The next option, and one that I've suggested to a number of people, is to use Google Meet as your method of blocking your um, phone number and making your calls. So it allows for outbound calls anytime, um, or you can um, you know, communicate some other way via email, a website, whatever, um, with whoever you're trying to communicate with, what uh, time that you want them to call, and then they would be able to call in, um, you know, at that time as well. So it's sort of quasi both allows outside or outbound and inbound calls. The outbound for sure, the inbound, you know, takes a little bit of effort to, uh, to schedule. So how would you do it? You'd create a Google Meet. A lot of people still call it Hangouts and open it up. Um, if you've got some other way of communicating with the person, uh, like email, Facebook, school messenger, plan book, website, you know, any other method that you have to communicate with them electronically, you could post the meeting information uh, via that, whatever that method is, and ask that they connect with you at a specified time or that they email you for an appointment. So when I say you would post that connection information, I'm gonna drag this window over here and what you would end up doing is um, going down here in the lower left hand corner and you can share out this meet dial in phone number and pin or you could share the url to the meeting or in a lot of cases you would probably share both if they don't have the ability to connect with the computer or a smart device they could use the phone number if they do then ideally they would use the the URL, and that way uh, you would be able to not only talk to them, but also uh, see them, they'd be able to see you. And um, in addition to that, you would be able to potentially share documents with them. Now, what you have to be uh, aware of, if they connect, let's say with a desktop computer, they would be able to see and hear you, assuming they have speakers, but unless they had a microphone or headset with a microphone or a uh, webcam, um, you wouldn't get potentially their audio or their video. And so they may still have to dial in with the phone number, even if they use like a desktop computer to connect in um, that way. So that's how you could post when you want them to connect with you. The key with that obviously is you have to be connected to that room at the same time. Um, you're not gonna get <clears throat> a you know phone ringing or some other uh, indication that they've connected in without you just 
happening to be in the room when they connect with you. So I'm going to come back to the screen in just a second. Uh, let's see. So I already talked about those other things. You can also use Google Mate to um, actually directly call them. So if you don't have any other way of communicating with them, like email or any other method anyway, um, you can actually create a Google Meet just for yourself, essentially. And once you're in that Google Meet, I'll bring my window back over here. This people menu up here in the upper right, you would click on that. And then you can click on add people. You can click on call. And then you would just enter in whatever phone number that you're trying to call them at. Click on this call button. You'll actually hear the phone ringing as they're hearing it ring. And if they do answer, uh, what they will hear is you're joining a call with one other person. So this text right here, they'll hear. And then immediately thereafter, um, they'll be live in your call and you would be able to directly talk to them. So assuming they don't hang up within those you know, three seconds that it takes for the automated voice to say that, um, you would essentially be talking to them just like you're talking to them on the phone. Um, if they don't answer, then that's always the question. So if you end up leaving them a message, what are you going to tell them? So I've listed some possible options here. Um, tell them maybe that you're going to call back at a certain time and that the number may be from outside the area. Like each time I've tried it out, um, it's always showed like it's a New York number that's calling. So give them that information so that they don't, um, you know, not answer just because of the fact that they think it's, you know, a sales call or, you know, some kind of a, um, you know, a scam or something. Um, so anyway, you could also ask them to email you um, and maybe in that email, you know, tell you when they would be available for a call back. Um, once you get that email, then you could use that to email them back with the full meeting information. Um, you know, and maybe you can do a video call at that time. Another option is to ask them to call you back at a specified time at the number and pin that's assigned to your meet. So if I bring this window back over here again, and I bring back up the meeting information down here, you could provide them this phone number and this pin now, yours is going to be different, of course, than what I'm showing on the screen, but you could provide them that information. Um, and then, again, as long as you're in that meeting at the time that they called back, then they would connect into the meeting with you, um, audio only in that case. You may also want to uh, tell them if you're going to uh, give them that option that when they do dial in, um, that they'll automatically be muted and we'll need to dial or press star six on their phone after they're connected to unmute. When they dial in, the automated voice will actually tell them that and you'll see them connect. Um, they'll be able to hear you as long as you're not muted. So if you're seeing that they are muted, you would just be able to, you know, uh, tell them that as well at that time. And then lastly, um, you could ask them to call you back at your school phone number and then whatever your extension is. So um, there's a lot of school districts, for example, that are connected to, to Scola ISD's phone system. Um, all that somebody has to do is dial the main number for the school. When you get the, or when they hear the auto attendant, you know, welcome to Tuscola ISD, they can actually just dial the person's five digit extension at that point, And that will cause their call to go to that extension. Now, the question, of course, would be, well, I'm not going to be in my classroom or my office, so how would I get that call? So that leads me to the sub bullet here. Many school phone systems have the ability to forward calls that come to an extension to a personal phone number. So if I was to have the parent call the district's main number, enter my extension, I could then have my extension forwarded to my personal phone. The person that's making the call, like the parent or the student, 
wouldn't know that that's actually happening other than the fact that it might take a little bit longer for the the call to go through because now it's got to ring through to your phone and for you to answer it but um they wouldn't see the fact that it's been transferred or know what number it's been transferred to um on your end you'll actually get a call that looks like the school is calling because real in reality the the you know the number is being forwarded uh, from the school system um now, if you need or want that kind of setup, um, it is something that the tech people at the school have to set up. And in fact, it's something that I would set up for any of the districts that are associated with Tuscola ISD. So you would just need to send me an email indicating what your extension number is and what phone number you want that extension forwarded to, and we can go in and, and set that up for you. So some of the pros and cons to using Google Meet uh, to accomplish this process. Uh, the pros, again, your phone number is protected. Um, it allows for making, both making and receiving calls. Again, the receiving calls part is something you've got to kind of just plan ahead for. Um, it is free with um, your Google School account. Um, you can use both audio and video calls. Uh, which this is the only solution that we've talked about that allows for both of those and it would allow you to share your screen um, you know whether it's to do some training with them or to show them a form they need to fill out or you know whatever it is um, you'd be able to share out and then lastly um, some people might use it as like an open office hours kind of concept they post on you know their their uh, classroom website or an, e an email blast out to parents and students that you know every thursday from one to three um, i'm going to be available for open office hours in my google meet room and then they just post that uh, the link or the phone number to it right there and um, as long as you're actually in that room during those hours anybody could pop in as needed the cons um Again, the phone number, if you do tell Google Meet to call them, is going to be an outside uh, of the area phone number. So they may or not may not be willing to answer it. And of course, again, if you end up in their voicemail, you need to be prepared with what is it you're going to ask them to do to call into the Google Meet number at a specified time, that you're going to call them back and it's going to be, you know, a New York or other um, remote number possibly, or you know, direct them to a particular site um, that you're able to post that information on. So I believe that concludes, oh, nope, I had one other uh, possibility here. And that's just to simply block your outbound caller ID on your own uh, phone. So most phone carriers allow you to block your outbound caller ID by adding star six seven in front of the number you're dialing. So you would just dial star six seven and then whatever the full phone number is that you normally would dial to call that person. So the pros of that, again, of course, your phone number is protected. Uh, the cons, they may not answer the phone because of the fact that it'll show up either as blocked or anonymous or as an unknown number. And a lot of people just simply don't answer those calls. And then again, if they don't answer and you end up having to leave a message, you're going to have to be prepared with what is it you're going to say? How are they going to call you back or how are they going to communicate with you or how are you going to call them back or when um, so this one certainly is the the simplest of all of them it doesn't require any setup by anybody you just star six seven and then their phone number um, but if they don't answer then you're still stuck with needing some kind of an alternate uh, plan uh, when you leave a message for them so hopefully these options were helpful to you um, i'll be posting this recording shortly and um, hope everybody is safe thank you